Hello everyone, this is Butter Cool, and you're currently watching my fourth video in my Premiere tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to go over how to draw arms and hands in four different positions. <laughs> As you can see, we have two versions, two, two head bodies, two head torsos, and that leaves us with four sets of arms and hands. So first of all, we're going to start with the top, top 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 one okay and we're going to start with a lesson in arm lengths yeah so <laughs> as you can see the middle of each shoulder is different in this category and <laughs> in this character we'll use the relaxed shoulder for the purposes of measuring things so actually if you stand up right now and just put your hands by your sides, you'll realize that your wrist should be around the, the, the level of your crotch area. Is, is that like a rule it's like of, of YouTube makers? Never mention the audience's crotch. That should probably be a rule. I'm not going to mention that anymore. But, so if you do that um, on your character, so draw a line from the middle of the shoulder to the bottom of their crotch and then draw a halfway line that'll be the length of one arm segment so either your forearm or upper arm in that case we will say one two three four five six seven seven is just like the magic number in these videos and uh yeah so seven is a good thing oh 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 no i wasn't supposed to do that and uh we'll erase that away we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll be our length. And now your arm can be any, 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 any position that is seven blocks away from <coughs> your elbow. Because the arm rotates around your arm. I'm <laughs> doing like a chicken thing over here. But yeah, you, you, you. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it can't reach any further than seven away in any given position but it can be shorter because that would be for shortening it's like the pen is this long but when you draw it if as you get point towards the camera it gets skinnier and skinnier okay so we are not going to be dealing with foreshortening too much in this video but we will be dealing with something about uh dealing with it and taking advantage of foreshortening but we're not going to get into that right now so here is the basic arm that we're going to do draw the uh, elbow joint and then connect them with a line that is going to be the top section of the arm and then we're going to pick our one two three four five six seven mark again and then uh actually our arm our wrist will end up being right around there. So normally you're not going to have these big arcs, arches, arcs, arches, arcs, 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 and uh, yeah, that's just for teaching purposes. So yeah, we have uh, armature for the arm. <laughs> armature. <laughs> Don't hate me, please. Okay, so. Admittedly, this this tutorial is not going. It's not super planned out. Why is there a pencil over here? Okay, it's not pen, blah, 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 planned out too well because I'm actually going to go into the hand right now. <laughs> so the hand position, uh, general sizing for hands. If you look at your own hand, match up your wrists, and then middle finger, and that's a good uh, a little over two thirds of the length of one of your arm segments. So your forearm. So we have one, two, three, four, five, about five in this drawing. One, two, three, four, five. That'll be where the tips of the fingers will be if they're outstretched, in which case, or in this case, they are. So go from the top of your little wrist ball and uh, make sure that your wrist ball is approximately the size of this. Nah, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, <laughs> so uh, here's one approach to drawing the hand in a sideways position. Uh, just remember that you 
are a person who most likely has hands and you know <laughs> hands are good and you have your own hands and you're drawing hands so you can draw your own hands so uh, you can be your own model so in this case uh your palm 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 is about the same length as fingers and you can make that generalization for a lot of anime style ish characters so I will cut this line in half, make a little arc there, because that is simulating the curve of the fingers at the palm, at the knuckles, inner knuckles. Are, do you have inner knuckles? Is that a real thing? I don't know if that's a thing. And uh, actually, that's that's not. Yeah, that's that. Okay. And then uh, we'll have a little curve in here, which is that. And then curve it back towards here. These are just. This is just a guideline that the thumb will stick out of right now. So <laughs> the thumb, if you look at your hand, will lead to about halfway through the fingers. So if you take a halfway mark and then put your thumb through it. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good at all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay and draw a thumb i'm sorry as okay uh thumb thumb it's a little skinnier at the knuckle usually if you're when you're drawing <clears throat> in this style not in real life and uh usually just observe your own thumb from this angle thumb is very round over here but if you're at the side angle you have roundness at the inside of the thumb and then when you get to the nail a nice sharp corner turn to go into the hand again now this hand we have a middle finger that will end up over here and then boom, something like that so we are actually outlining where the tips of the fingers will end up as we continue this hand um so this is just the mitten version of a hand uh <clears throat> i think i'll actually make this give this one fingers right now but for the rest of the hands they will remain mittens on this bottom one at least this top one will have fingers also <laughs> who does planning for the tutorial videos not budgies are cool actually i do this, there, it's, it's over here on off screen but <laughs> I don't plan very well apparently okay so anyway we have uh, I'm gonna go with this general hand position so we have a straight finger semi straight and then we start curving down so go down and down fingers generally follow very nice arcing pattern so you can see there's an arc to the fingertips an arc to the knuckle an arc over here in that thumb area and then if you can make it flow with the arm that'll give it more elegance and make it easier for you to draw it so let's flesh out the arm now that we fleshed out the hand let's start from the shoulder Let's give her some shoulder muscleage up there because, you know, anatomy. <laughs> I'm not an anatomy major or biology major or any kind of that major. So, yeah, um, we'll generally want to give it some muscle over here. You know how it usually has some stuff over there, but uh, if you don't want your character to look like a bodybuilder, you can downplay it a little bit. You'll usually be a little thicker up towards the shoulder and then skinnier as you get towards the elbow and then we'll cut off our lines right at the elbow the bottom of the forearm tends to be fairly flat it can be flat at the wrist and that very slight curve as you get to the elbow and the top of the forearm in this case is where the muscles are being flexed a little more so we're going to go up and out, flare out at the top of the forearm, give a little bit of muscle there, and then 
connected. Yay! And then we can <laughs> zoom out and see if she looks like a bodybuilder. Totally not. Okay. And now we'll go on to this hand. Um, so for this hand, I'm actually going to draw it away from the character just for the sake of getting some basics of hands down. Um, here, I'll draw a wrist joint right here. One, two, three, four, five is what we decided was the length of one hand. Um, and what I usually do is I like to draw the palm first, which I totally didn't do for that other hand. And the palm will be wider at the top than at the bottom because the wrist is the skinniest point of the hand. And then draw a line, curving line, make sure it's curving. Make sure it's curving! Yeah, that goes down to the bottom over here. Now, if you look at your own hand, you can kind of draw a line that flows from your pointer finger down to your wrist. So that is what we'll do here. Nice and flowy. And then, since this hand is splayed out fairly much, so a lot, it is splayed out a lot. <laughs> We will have the pinky finger be out there. A lot shorter than the ring finger. What? Ring finger? Yeah, a lot shorter than the ring finger. And the point finger and the middle finger. And then complete that finger arc. Now, so this thing actually looks like a hand. Let's draw a little bit of a triangle over here. That's what makes the rest of the palm. And as you can see, the thumb will be coming out of here. And like I said, when we drew the other one, the uh, tip of the thumb will meet about halfway up the fingers if you make an arc and continue it along. So, do that, bump, and that. That, that, that follows that, yeah, it's a little fatter over here and a little skinnier over there. And then, for this hand, we're actually going to have it not like this, but that. So, those middle fingers are going to be together, or the middle finger along with the ring finger. For uh, spacing, because, you know, sometimes fingers are kind of hard to fit all on one hand. And we have five of them, four main fingers, and you get your opposable thumb. Um, I like to draw the line that's between the middle finger and the ring finger. Position that on the palm, so that is about halfway between here and here, but maybe a little towards the pinky area because the uh, pinky is fairly small, so is the ring finger, just in terms of knuckle space. <laughs> and uh, yeah, from there, just... Here, we can finish that middle finger. Make sure that it's skinnier at the tip of the finger than at the bottom. We don't want sausage fingers. Same with there. And same with there. These aren't very uh, anatomically accurate fingers. As you can see, real fingers have all extra little curves and nuances and little lines that go in places, but this is just for the sake of having hands on your characters that don't look like uh, uh, sausage, sausage hands. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Did I say that I had tonsillitis? I had tonsillitis. That's why this video is like really late. So yeah, that hurt. My throat was horrible. I was like, I want to eat food, but I couldn't eat food, and that was tragic. You know what I ate? Soup. I mean, I love soup, but I, even that was hurt. That was hurty. Hurt, hurting soup. Soup hurt. And like swallowing. I couldn't even swallow. I was just like, I, I felt like getting a spit can and just being like, pui. Um, so yeah, we have a hand. We're going to move it over here and kind of have it in front of the eyes. Eye, one eye, 
I between it and boom. And uh, this is actually the approach that I would usually use for this drawing. I would draw the hand first and then I would draw the rest of the arms. So just remember one, wait, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are well within that bound. So we're not breaking any arms or ripping anything out of their sockets. So that's how that goes. This part of the arm starts off flat, gets a little more curvy towards the elbow. Bent arms tend to be a little more difficult because you're displacing a lot of your muscle and tissue and fat. And that makes for some fun skin folds and bulges and wrinkles and stuff. But, again, you are your own best model, so go find an object, or an object, a reflective object, or your phone, or a mirror, or something like that, and then just make all your poses and be all weird, and don't be afraid of it. I actually started doing all my anime style drawing in college, in the dorms, with roommates. And then I would just be doing my own things, be like, Ooh, look at my hands. And then my, my roommates would be like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm drawing, don't judge me. And they judged me anyway, and they're still my best friends. Okay, so I'll go down here. And uh, oh yeah, so look, we drew two arms and hands. This one's actually really long. I'm gonna, um, okay, okay. So this is just off the records, but guys, you didn't see this. None of this happened. What is he doing? I don't know. Wow, oh my gosh, what's happening? Oh, buddy, so what? I didn't do that. Okay, now let's go to the arm over here. Sorry, just sometimes even though you follow uh, measurements and all those kinds of things, sometimes anatomy just looks off. And uh, if you're using a digital program such as this Paint Tool Sci, then you can make these adjustments as you go. If you're using paper and pencil like a normal person, what? 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 What are these things? What? Pencil? Paper? Plans? Look at the plans that I did. And uh, then you just have to <laughs> draw good the first time or just don't worry about it at all. And then just draw and have fun. That's the best thing about drawing is having fun. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next arm, our third arm. Ho 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 on our second body so we're not having triple arm people but we are having two arm people and this person will have a arm not be a potato 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 anyway yeah her hand is going to be on her hips that's a fairly popular pose that you'll most likely come across a couple times in your drawing career um i'm looking at my <laughs> the reference that i just drew and threw all over my desk and uh yeah, so here is the wrist circle, and uh, this is actually a slightly foreshortened palm trapezoid thing. So the pointer finger is up here, here's the knuckle line, and we will just draw something that resembles the fingers. So in this case, all the fingers are together, not splayed out. And uh, we'll just draw the mitten hand that I was talking about earlier. So just kind of have your... <laughs> just have some general lines that kind of get the idea across. If you want to keep adding detail to your fingers, make them more realistic, then you can do that using your own fingers as... Uh, as a reference because that's the best thing you can do. Now we will draw our shoulder. I mean <laughs> our elbow. Elbows over here, shoulders over here. Draw our lines in there. As you can see this is by no means seven squares long but we can say that it's a little behind. The elbow is not flat with the paper but maybe rotated behind her a little bit. In which case, we can say that it was foreshortening. In which lengths get shortened. 
and dreams come true. I have no idea what I'm saying. I had coffee a long time ago this time, so that means I'm running on fumes, caffeinated fumes. What's that? It's hot in here again. I need to do these during winter. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I get tonsillitis again, I can finish up this series in the winter time. That really sucked, you know. That was, oh my gosh, that was so much pain. Um, but this isn't learn how to complain with budgets are cool. This is learn how to lean on a ledge over here with our next arm. Okay, so I drew a ledge over here because I'm like, what am I going to do with this arm potato shoulder thing? And... I was like, okay, we're gonna lean. We're gonna lean against the thing. So, draw the middle of the thing. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm gonna think. I'm gonna say words, not just things. Thing, thing. Okay. So draw the middle of your shoulder, and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Blah, 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 blah. So that's where the longest part of the arm can be. So this is where her shoulder joint will end up, and then. We'll have her wrist be over here. Right there. Okay. And now, as you can see, some wanky wanky stuff is happening over here. But that is also one of the wonderful things of foreshortening. So this elbow is behind her. This elbow is about flat with the paper that she is on. And then uh, this wrist is actually coming out this way. Now, we will draw the palm, or the uh, main part of the hand over here that her fingers are going to come out of. Actually, I'm going to redo that. And then, yeah, there's where the pinky will come out, there's where the point or finger will come out, and that's one of the main things about this. Make sure that you have your hand orientation correct too many times I've drawn the thumb and just everything on the wrong side and there's like hey guys what's happening and it's just been horrible it's just disfigured and it it's the drawing will look painful like after you're done and you're like ah this that was a good drawing and then you're like oh wait why does why do I why do I cringe why does what is why do my joints hurt when I <laughs> look at this and it's because of a hand probably in the wrong position okay so here, just drawing the finger arcs again, and uh, here's the pointer, here's the middle, ring finger, and there's the pinky, dunk, dunk, dunk. and then the thumb is back here, so you don't really have to draw it there, and now let's flesh out the arm, again we have the bent elbow. So we got all the arm flesh squished out at the elbow joint. And then we got a nice pointy part over here. And then there, just like a drumstick. And now, shoulder. A nice defined shoulder because it is being flexed. Not really flexed, but scrunched up. And then, bottom of the armpit comes out over here. And then, I do believe that that about wraps it up. So, what we can say here is, uh, actually, this is another really good part. The whole shoulder and armpit region is a really good part for you to go find a mirror and leave your dignity behind <laughs> and just try to get these positions and folds all correct. So yeah, that uh, that about sums up hands and arms. Oh wait, no, I, I didn't sum it up yet. I'm going to sum it up right now. So yeah, uh, length, of an, length of an arm segment is about halfway between the shoulder, relaxed shoulder, and the bottom of the crotch. Get that length, try to remember it. If, however you can, you can just get another piece of paper, mark it, and then make that your ruler, or you can just use grid paper like this. I'll put the link to this paper in the description, and then use that as your general guideline for how long things are, so your arm lengths. 
uh, your hand will be about two thirds of the length of one arm segment and the length of a hand is from the wrist to the tip of the fingers and then um, for this hand we have uh, the palm or the knuckle line is about halfway between the bottom of the wrist to the tip of the fingers the thumb is about on the same arc as halfway of the fingers and then after that just connect it over here when your elbow is uh, burp, like that oh look everything's all squishy and it all uh, comes out over there and uh, oh no i did the thing where no words are coming out anymore <laughs> uh, jokes on y'all no jokes on me because no one's gonna like it okay and oh look i didn't draw any thumbs on this one <laughs> weird okay and uh yeah foreshortening because things happen uh main thing for uh foreshortening is actually when you do the shading try to get things in a position an area where uh, shading will kind of push things behind bring them out uh in this case we don't really need to do that because actually i will but that will be for future videos Okie dokie, I think that about wraps things up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the section below. Also, if you're interested in commissions, I'll leave a link in the description where you can find pricing and contact information. I've actually done some, oh, blah, blah, blah. I've actually had some pretty good uh, experiences with these so far. So, go for it. Okie dokes, thank you very much for watching. This is Budgets Are Cool, and take care. Do 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 do